This is the IFF TV podcast. Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. We're continuing on with our season previews. We've got Derry City lined up. I'm joined by Kevin Morrison, who is the manager of the Oxford Bulls and also the Derry City photographer. Kevin, how are you on this fine Sunday? Not too bad, Paul. How's yourself? Ah, good, all good. Enjoying the warm weather now. I mean, it's coming and going, but we'll take it when it comes, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. What's it like up there? It's not too bad, actually. Uh, weather ways, it's dry and uh, a bit cold, but as long as it's dry, Paul, we're grand. You know, you can get out and uh, get a wee bit of football practice with the kids and whatever. So it's 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 not too bad. It is what it is, Paul. We just have to kind of stick with it now for the next couple of weeks and hopefully we'll get somewhere now that the vaccine's getting rolled out and so on. So fingers crossed. Yeah, 100%. Now, obviously, we got kind of links from before we went up and did a video which is um kind of when we first started out really uh mm-hmm. it was it was a mad snowy day actually i remember it we got was. lost and stuff <laughs> that was a crazy day we thought we were going to see you at one stage uh we kept getting updates it was like kind of the rolling news you know where we're at where we're at we're on own term we're stuck in snow but he's got there we had a great day actually the, the boys the boys enjoyed it too you know yeah, well, I just before we get on to Derry, I just want to talk about the lads because obviously it's a hard time for everyone at the moment. How are the lads kind of getting on with this at the minute? Well, it's it's we have a mixed bag with our players, Paul. Um, some of them have uh, heart problems, so they're still shielding. Um, some of them have mobility problems, so it's been a mixed bag for them. Some of them can't get out. Um, my son Adam, as you know, will be out in the garden pretty much every day with a football at his feet if he get away with it. Um, so it's just been a mixed bag for them, but hopefully we're hoping that you know there's going to be some kind of movement on outdoor sports um, for children, especially in the next few weeks from storming. So fingers crossed, we're uh, we're hopefully going to be back soon. Um, we've been doing stuff online with them, with doing wee quizzes and bingo and a bit of training, indoor training. We've sent them out wee training packs, hoops and cones and whatever, um, and they've enjoyed that. They've enjoyed the crack of kind of keeping in touch. Um, but there's no substitute, as you know, Paul, for getting on the pitch and, and, and kicking a ball so finger crossed it won't be too long now you know yeah I I, I know from obviously being around them and all, they're all so enthusiastic and all mm-hmm. so I, I just hope that you can get back playing soon because yeah. I know how much from being around is actually playing a game which is how much they yeah. love playing oh, the football with. And I mean, credit- we, have, we have a new kit uh, which we got um, our sponsors provided us for and it was for the season, but we haven't actually got a chance to launch it. So just a wee uh, exclusive for uh, Aries Hampton Ball TV. <clears throat> We're going to have a video out on the 21st of March, which is World Down Syndrome Day, in case anyone doesn't know. Um, we're going to have a new um, kit launch with all our players, doing a wee dance and showing off a new kit. They get new training coats, they get new training tops, sweat tops, training tops, shorts, training shorts, socks. You know, they've got the work, so uh, we want to show it off a wee bit. Hopefully we'll actually get to use it in the next couple of months as well. I'm brilliant, but I hope you do. I actually have an Oxford Bulls jersey that you sent me you down do, to yep. that studio. Mm-hmm. I have it, so uh, don't worry. I just I can't get over to the studio now because of lockdown yeah. and stuff like that. But I do have one, so thank you for that. I never got a chance. No to problem. Actually. Thank you for that. No problem. Yeah, but we're here to talk about Derry City anyway, and um, you obviously got cl- close relations there and stuff like that. And I just said you'd be the best man for the job. So just kind of on Derry last season, I suppose the finishing seventh it wasn't the best season but it was such a strange season for everyone I mean I'm a Shells fan as I told you off air there and we got relegated and stuff like that so it's one of those where it, I think last year was just a write-off but from going from European places to season before and a really impressive season to be honest to finish in seventh what was your kind of overall feeling about last season because for me on the outside looking in it was very kind of just inconsistent i mean you would win a good result one week and, yeah. and then lose next week well that's it it was i mean i remember the first night uh back in the brandy well uh during lockdown i think it was against sligo rovers and i just felt <laughs> you know what it's like paul when you when you don't have a crowd to start with it's a, it's a totally different game i think professional footballers even junior footballers feed off any kind of interaction with the crowd. Um, and I recall that night in particular, there was just this odd sense at the Brandywell of, uh, I, I couldn't even describe it. It was just, it was just blah. You know what I mean? The players looked anxious. 
Um, the management of both teams looked anxious. The officials looked anxious. They were everyone was conscious of making sure they were socially distant and wearing their masks, and so on. And I just think it was as the season panned out, it was a crazy season. But I remember that night thinking this is this is gonna be just it's just not gonna be the same for a start. We had the piped in um, you know, uh, crowd noises and so on, but it just wasn't the same. And you could see it's one of the players, I think, that they 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 needed they needed people to be there. They needed the crowd. They needed the encouragement um, to maybe you know step it up a gear or two. And it just wasn't there. I think. And I think they were a victim of the circumstances, basically Sligo and, and Derry that night. And a lot of the teams. I mean, the, the, as you say, the scores were the went up and down really much every week. And it was hard to know what Derry was going to turn up um, week after week. But behind the scenes. You know, I've been doing photographs for them and videos and whatever, and you get to know the players. Um, and it wasn't for the lack of effort. You know, the guys were, were, were working very hard in training. They were still having to socially distance and, and, and uh, you know, sanitize their hands and all the rest of it. Um, so there was a lot of effort being made, and Decky and his team never give more than less than 100%. They always, they, they are the hardest working management team I've ever seen at the Brandywell. Um, but it just was one of those seasons that, you know, had I my way, I would have just wrote it off. But Rovers took it, so we have to take we have to take a royal for that one, you know. Yeah, well, I just from, from like I actually saw Derry up close against Shells in Talker Park. I think that might have been a one-all draw if yeah, I remember was, correctly. Yeah. Um, but I thought Derry were very good that day. You know, Shells. I think at that stage we're starting to get a little bit of a run going, but uh, Derry I thought they looked very well. But as you say, it was for me every time I see Derry, it's like I don't know which Derry City is going to turn up because yeah. when they come down to yeah. Dublin, this obviously home advantage w- would be a case for you guys um, yeah. and with a crowd. But now that you kind of coming down with no fans, and I've been inside the grounds obviously like yourself, like doing media and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and I just find that. You know the the grounds are soulless because there's no crowd there, and it's like a training yeah. match every time. And you yeah. you actually have the players sitting beside you yeah. in the media thing, and you, it's just I I just, I'm just not a fan of football. It's nothing for me without fans. You know yeah. I really think. Oh, that. I agree. I agree. It was, uh, and uh, you know you even see it if you're watching the Premier League on 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 television now. You're hearing every word that's spoken. You're hearing every call by the players, by the coaches, by everything. And it's as you say, it's like being at a, a park football match or, or a training game. You know, and I think the first night I was talking about there against Sligo, that's what it struck me. Like it was just like a training match, um, and the, the players on both sides, not just in Derry, they just couldn't get, they couldn't get charged up to actually, you know, perform the way they probably could have done. Um, and I think as well, I don't know how how this worked, but it, you did mention it just now. Derry seemed a wee bit better on their travels last year. Um, you know, and it used to be that you know you're under more pressure at home, but there were no crowds there, so it was a strange kind of it was a strange kind of uh, situation. But no, I mean, I think it is what it is. Again, as we said, for last year was it was a totally different uh, kettle of fish. I, I, you know, I don't think, uh, and all the time I've been watching football, I've ever seen anything like it. Um, the piped in sounds are good and all the rest of it, but it's it's no substitute for for real fans. And and you know, you, you hear a lot of people asking, why can we not even have 400, 500 fans spaced, you know, around the ground. And it just, it just makes such a difference. Um, but you have to stick to the regulations. And, and that's something that, as I say, I, I, I've been um, involved as a volunteer with Derry getting photographs and whatever. So every so often I get asked to come to training and, and do some photographs or whatever. And how tight they are with, their, with sticking to the regulations, you know, you have to be invited in. You have to do your... Uh, sanitizing your hands, you have to keep social distance, wear a mask, temperature taken before every training session. And that's just for me, the club photographer, so you can imagine what it's like for the players. Um so it, it was just I don't know, I think I think to be honest, I think they were glad to see the back of the season. Um they had brought on a few players that maybe didn't work out the way they'd hoped. Um but at the same time we still had a strong enough squad, you know, so I just think the circumstances dictated that it wasn't going to be our best season. Yeah, well, see, I, I actually have a list here, and I'm going to shout out Andrew Dempsey again. I've been shouting him out on the last couple of videos because he has an updated list um, of mm-hmm. the player of the sorry, the teams and the transfer. So yeah. I'll just start off. I'll just start off with the outs, 
and you can basically say kind of if you're mm -hmm. you know sad or happy that they're gone uh -huh. or whatever whatever way you want to do it because I think there's some some decent players on there. Mm -hmm. uh, so Stephen Mallon's gone to Bohemians, Ali Gilchrist has gone to Shelburne, Ger uh, Gerardo Bruno has gone to Shelburne, Peter Cherry's gone to Dundalk, Ibrahim Mate, uh, he, it doesn't say he has a club but he's he's gone. Mm -hmm. uh, Walter Figuera, Connor Clifford's gone to Bray. Connor McCormick and Colum Horgan have all mm -hmm. left the club. Um, there, there may be other people that have left, I'm not sure, but that's all that's mm -hmm. on that list there. Yeah. I mean, you've just listed a name there, that, a, a list of names that could be almost a team in itself. I mean, I was a big fan of Ali Gilchrist. Um, I thought he was a super defender. I thought he was a great leader. Um, not afraid to, 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 to put his foot on and put his head on where it mattered. Um, but again... He, he had an injury and it, he just never seemed to recover from that when he did come back, but a, but a super player. Peter Cherry, I thought, was a great goalkeeper. Um, the list goes on. You know, Walter Figuera came very, very highly rated, um, but I'm not sure why it didn't seem to work for him. We saw glimpses, you know, of yeah. some of the skills that he had. Um, in particular, he, he, he kind of lobbed the ball over a guy with the back heel one time. I think it was against some pats in the brand well. Pure class, you know, so we, we could see he could do it, but it didn't seem to happen for him. Um, Connor Clifford's another another example, a, a, a very highly rated player, very technically gifted player. Um, but it, again, I, I just think they came together at a time when it was so difficult to actually to gel the club. When you couldn't, when you brought in so many players, uh, Paul, you know yourself, you have to have time to get them to bond and they have to be, some of them are living in digs together and so on. But because of the social distance, it, it, it was just impossible to to let this team actually get together pre-season, do a proper pre-season, and to to bond properly. Um, and I think that that invariably affected how the team performed, how the individual players performed. Um, Gerardo Bruno was another guy who super super talent. You know, he could pass a ball 30, 40 yards on to sixpence, but again. Was, was prone to injury and we didn't seem to get the best of him when he was on form. He was superb. You know, Shelburne have got a, a good player there. So it, it's, it's, I just think it, it, everything has to be, you know, um, predicated on what the actual season and the situation was that those players were in. Um, Colin Horgan's a, a, an interesting one because every time I saw Colin play, I thought he gave balance uh, to the defence on the right side, um, but he didn't seem to figure and Deggy's plans um, as much as maybe he probably thought he would do. So I don't know what the situation was there, a good enough player, but he didn't seem to um, to fit what, what Deggy was looking to do. Um, so as I say, it's it's a hard one to, to understand, you know, um, but I think the bottom line is lockdown, um, the pre-season been disrupted by it, um, the new players, we did bring in a lot at the one time, um, and it just... I just don't think players, their, their hearts were in it in the same way had they been able to train properly, live together properly, um, and then bond with the fans as well. Yeah, well, just kind of kind of on that, because obviously uh, there's players that have re-signed, so I just want to kind of get your opinion on the players that have re-signed, because I imagine they're big, big players for you and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, um, Kieran Call, James Akintunde, Ronan Boyce, Cameron McJanis, Darren mm -hmm. Cole, Kieran Harkin, Mark McChrystal, uh, Patrick Ferry and Jack Lemonan. I hope I said that right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, to be honest, there seems to be a better. Uh, I've been over a pre season now a few times, and there seems to be a good uh, atmosphere about training this year. Um, the manager are very impressed with some of the young lads we've brought, brought in from the academy. Uh, you mentioned Ronan Boyce. Ronan has been in the academy for a few years now and he's been on the fringes of the first team. Um, now they've given him a professional contract, it's like someone has kind of just injected him with a bit of power and, and, and enthusiasm and drive to do this because I've seen him in training and Deggy has mentioned this in the press a few times. He's on fire in training. Um, he looks like a more experienced player than he is. Um, he's not quiet. He's coming across, you know, he's getting involved with the senior players and so on. Um, Jack Demonian's a, a young goalkeeper who has been through this, the academy as well um, and has had a couple of appearances recently. Um, there's a few. Patrick Ferry, again, looks at, at, you know, a nice uh, technically, technical uh, player up front. Um, and then you have the kind of stalwart that are already there. Owen Toll, for me, is one of the best centre-halves in the league. And he's only, what, 23? 22, 23? 
Kieran Call, similarly at fullback. Um, so no, I think this season they're looking good. And, and of course, we mustn't forget young Joe Hodge, um, who they brought over from from Manchester City. Now he's off for a couple of weeks. They've pulled an injury in in, in training. Um, but when I, I saw him in training as well, Paul, and he's a small guy, right? And you're thinking, oh God, no, that's that's not going to work. You have to see this guy in training. <laughs> You know, um, the senior players. It doesn't matter who you are. You'll get a bollocking from them. If, pardon my French. If you, you know, you it's don't. If you don't act up. Uh, if you don't uh, do as you're supposed to be doing. If you don't pass the ball to them, he's very willing to get on the ball and uh, not afraid to get on the ball. Um, so he looks a, a real player. You know, and I've seen video clips of him before, but I haven't seen him in, in, in reality. He's such a good player. Um, we, we've recently got a couple of. Um, Loan signings we got Will Patrick well, I can, from, I can, from I can go through the I can yeah. go through the list if you want. Yeah. Um I might as well because we'll we'll talk about them all then. So you've got Danny Lafferty from Shamrock Rovers, Danny Lupano from Hull City, David Parkhouse is uh signed back with from yeah. Sheffield United, Joe Hodge, as you mentioned there on loan, Will Fitzgerald, Will Patching on loan from Dundalk and Mark mm-hmm. Walsh from Swansea City. Again, there might be yeah. a couple uh, off that list missing. I know Owen yeah. Cole was actually missing off the re signed list. So Yes, I no, as I say, uh, I've seen Will Patching play against uh, Finn Herbst during the week, and um, he actually looks a bit of a player. You know, he wasn't afraid to. He literally, I got a few photographs of him with his foot on the ball. You know, and it was a quite a testy wee match. You know, there were um, there were a few flying tackles and stuff going on, so there were no prisoners after taken. So he uh, he looked a bit of a player. Um, that's kind of hard. Pre seasons never a best way to judge players anyway. You know. Um, but we've got David Parkhouse back, which is a massive boon for the, for the club. Definitely. And he's on a, he's on a three-year contract. And he scored against Finn Hurst on uh, Thursday night there. And he just looks like the way he was before when he was banging them in for fun. Um, one thing about Parky I always find is he plays it with a smile on his face. You know, I, I've got photographs of him training and he's smiling. I've got photographs of him doing weights and he's smiling. And he's scoring goals. He's smiling. Um, and he provides that wee bit more physicality, I think, that, that, that they lacked last year. You know, um, Walter Figuera, for example, is smaller and, and more um, agile and, and, and you know, uh, skillful. Parky is big and strong and fast and powerful. I just wore goals. He can, he can score from outside the box, inside the box with his head. You know, and I think he's going to give uh, the Ireland defenders a rough time this year because he is he's definitely a massive a massive part of Deggie's plans. Um and as I say, Will Fitzgerald is an interesting one. I think that, that um, a couple of managers before have been looking at him. And um, I hadn't really, I hadn't given him on my radar at all, but I've watched him again in training and watched him against Harps um, at the, last week. He actually was a, a, a bit of a decent player as well, but a pace about him and he was able to get past his man a few times. So again, there's a wee bit of hope on, on that respect. Um, so, no, fingers crossed, Paul. I think the squad... Um, it just looks that wee bit more, you know, even in chatting to the players of a guy, Joe Thompson, who came from Scotland last year, really, really hard worker. But, you know, does a lot of the stuff that people don't talk about and, and you know, protecting the back four. And yet at the same time, still able to get forward and, and even score a goal in Europe last year as well. So there's there's a good mix there at this time. And and I think when, when Deggie actually decides on his final first 11, I think they'll give anybody a good game this year. Now, it's just interesting that you spoke about David Parkhouse there. I think he was a key reason why Derry got into Europe. Yeah. And as you mentioned, you know, he was scoring goals. I remember one goal he scored was from miles. It was about yeah. 30 yards or something. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure he did, didn't he? Yeah. I was against Waterford, yeah. In the Brandy one. Yeah, I, was I, I mean, he, 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 he's just got a great attitude, you know. Um, and as I say, when you're volunteering for the club and you're taking photographs, you get to know the players a little bit more. Um, and he's he's a great lad and he's a, he's a tough trainer. Um but he's a tough, he's a tough opponent, and he never. I, 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 you know, I watch him sometimes, and I'm out of breath watching him at the side of the pitch, let alone try to catch up with him. You know, he is, he is a super, super player, and the fact that they've got him on a three-year contract is, to me, is a massive, is a massive, massive thing. Um, and I think then he's got James Akinfinley playing alongside him, hopefully. Um, and James came in last year as well from England. Um, he's a small guy, but very powerfully built and very, very quick. Um, and and doesn't just play up front. You know, he'll chase back. He'll do the hard work and, and stuff as well. So, it's for me. I'm hoping, you know, that it's going to be it's going to be a better season. I really do think there seems to be Danny Lafferty's another one. 
you know, the guy has buckets of experience. Um, so we're hoping that the, the defensive unit, as far as I can see, is going to be as, as good as many in, in the league, if, if not best, better, because Darren Cole's playing well again. As I say, big Owen Toll in the centre back, um, Kieran Call as well. There's so many um, that I just think this this could be a good year for it. I'm not saying they're going to win the league. I think Rovers are going to be in, in, in prime spot again, but I do think they're going to give more of a challenge this year. Yeah, well, just just kind of on Lafferty and Joe Hodge because I think they're two really key signs. I think Hodge be Hodge will be there. I think six months, so yeah. um, he'll be there probably summertime. Then he'll he, he may get yeah. that extended maybe if he does well. well hopefully, it. yeah. Hopefully that is the case, you know. And uh, you mentioned there, I think that's really really good that like he's that age and he's not scared yeah. to kind of give a bollock into yeah. it. Yeah, you know, the older senior yeah. players, you know. I was I was really impressed by him in training. Um, I met him. Uh, we did a few photographs of the club first, and he's a really quiet guy. You know, you you, you tend to meet a lot of young footballers, and they're they're, they're kind of they've got a swagger about them, and and they're all that. This guy was so modest, and and, and, and didn't like getting his photos taken, and um, so we had to kind of have a bit of crack with him to loosen him up a wee bit. Um, yeah. But then I went and saw him in training, and and I thought this 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 guy looks the part. He really does, and as I say, he didn't shirk out the challenges. He wasn't shy in, in giving his opinions to the senior players. Um, so fingers crossed, you know, when he gets out of this injury and he's and he's back in the squad. And he came mid season, so it's not that he's missing pre season, but you know, he's he's um I would say he'd be ready to go if once he's once he's back up and fit again. So no, there's there's a lot. I mean, you mentioned Danny Lepano there as well. Danny's on loan from Hull City. Now yeah. Declan had brought him over last year before the lockdown and, and he eventually had to go back to England and he's on loan. But Danny's a big guy. Um, and I remember the first couple of games he played for Derry last year. Um, we played Dundalk in the Brandywell, and Danny Laplano played it right back, and he marked um, Michael Duffy out of the game. You know, and and to mark Mickey Duffy out of the game, you know, you, you have to be on form. The the, the the guys the guys on fire. So Danny's come back this year again. He can play right back uh, on centre back. He's 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 a big lad. You know, so. There's, there's there's a lot going on here. It's going to be hard for him, I think, to pick his first eleven um, because there are some. And I mean, young Jack Malone's another guy who I think this season is going to be very important for now. Uh, again, coming through the ranks, he has he's he's an immense wee talent, small guy, but really really quick, um, hard as nails as well. So no, I the, the future's red and white, as they say. I think they're going to have a good year this year. I really do. Um, and I think they have to be pushing for top four and they have to be pushing for Europe again. Deggy's always said that Europe's vital. Um, Europe, Europe's vital for any club nowadays, you know, in Ireland. So fingers crossed we'll be uh, we'll be there, thereabouts this year. Yeah, because that's actually what, it's usually the last question I'll finish on anyway. So just kind of what position do you think, in your head rather than your heart, what do you, what position do you feel Derry will finish in? I honestly think this year they have the potential to go top four. Um, I think some of the 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 the, the way that the, the teams have uh, strengthened throughout the league means I think it might be more balanced this year. Um, and there are some signings in clubs, and you're thinking that's a, that's a bit left field or whatever. So I'm not sure that I mean, for example, Rovers have lost Jack Byrne and Aaron McInnes from there from their midfield for a start. Um, now I know they've they've brought in replacements and they've still got Green and then they've still got Burke and so on. But you know that takes a lot to replace those two guys. Uh, particularly Jack Byrne. I mean, he, he's, a, he's a top talent. Aaron McInnes going to Hearts, another really hard-working midfielder. So they're going to find it hard. Dundalk have, have brought on new faces. They've loaned out a few. So there seems to be a wee bit of transition going on in a number of teams. So I think this is the opportunity now for Derry, if they get a good pre-season under their belt, which they seem to do at the minute, to uh, to push for top four. Um, they always say it, you know, we get a good cup run maybe and get into Europe. But ideally, I, I would say Declan wants to see them going up seventh just as it shouldn't be an option. I think they're a big enough club. They've got good enough players now um, to push for top four. Yeah, I wouldn't rule it out. So uh, mm-hmm. I actually, I actually would be probably tipping them to kind of finish in the top four myself. So yeah. I don't think you're being delusional in saying that no. either. You know, I think there's a realistic chance in what you're saying and kind of mm-hmm. what you said is very calculated in terms of there is like. Every team is nearly in, in transition because yeah. the Dock have, have a whole new team and lost a lot yeah. of characters. Yeah. The, uh, Rovers gained, I know they lost um, a lot of players um, in the midfield, especially Greg mm-hmm. Walger, Jack and Aaron. Yes. Um, 
talk of Richie Towell is supposed to be signed for them halfway through the season. That, so that could yeah. be interesting. So, absolutely, absolutely. So yeah. no, it's, but they may I'm, not. I'm, they I'm, may not start well, though. You know, so that so that might give well, you. A is, it does take. It does. It does take a time, and that's that's going to be key for the area. I think is if if they get a good start. You know, now I know they, they play Rovers in their second game, the brandy well, but you know, maybe a bit, a bit a good as good a time as any to play them before they actually get into their stride. Um, no, I think that you know we have a lot of players now that have gone on to other teams from Derry. So you're going to have from Sligo's coming to Brandywell, you're going to have Walter Figuera, Colin Horgan, um, you know, and th- that adds a wee bit of spice things as well. So you just you just don't know how it's going to work. But I, you know, I, I'm liking what I'm seeing at the at, at the training sessions. I'm liking how the things working out. Um, the players seem to be getting on well. It seems to be a good bond. Um, the leaders are starting to come out as well. We have a couple of uh, vice captains at the club as well, which. And they look after the fine system and stuff like that. So it, it, it's it's um, they all seem to be working together towards a common goal. And that's as far as I know, that's what Deggy wants. He wants them to be pushing towards it. Um, and I say top four would be would be a great improvement this year. Yeah, it sounds like a very professional environment. What he's got going there. So I can only wish he's the best of luck for the yep. rest of the season. Like Kev, thanks very much for for coming on. And I hope you guys at Oxford Bowl get the chance to get back playing football in some capacity the next week and send us over the uh, the video of the kit launch as well we'll share it on our channels as well brilliant Paul hey listen thanks a million good to talk to you take care alright thanks very much bye bye this is the IFF TV podcast like rate and subscribe <laughs>